Mark Gross here. My God, we're at Monster Mania 2016 with the very cool, the good-looking Mr. Robert Anglin. How are you doing, sir? Oh, you're not so gross. No, I'm not. I'm just a gross guy. How many times do you have to hear I that? I know. <laughs> this is my fourth interview in years with Mr. Robert Anglin. He's always got some great stories. Well, we usually do it in uh, we usually do it in uh, in New Jersey, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. You did two here in Baltimore and two yeah. there. Yes, sir. But I live here, so. I'm trying to find this great Indian restaurant I went to here. last time I was in Baltimore. I was with Melinda Clark. Right. My beautiful wife. Right. And Heather Langenkamp. Yes, indeed. And uh, I had three of the most beautiful girls in Maryland with me. <laughs> yes, you and did. I, we, I know it's Inner Harbor. It's got to be. I was going to say it's got to yeah, be Inner, Inner Harbor. Yeah, it's Inner Harbor. And, it, and, and it's these crabs. big circular tables. And they treat that they they take the Maryland crab and they treat it with an Indian spice. Oh my oh, God! Oh man! Now if I know, I'm gonna have to tell Dave uh, to tell you before I leave if here today. You, if you guys can do some research. <laughs> we will. Okay. You've had such a career, my friend, and you, it's ongoing. You've done everything. A lot of fans obviously know you as Freddy Krueger. You've done V. You've done uh, movies. You've done announcing. You've done everything. For you personally, sir. I don't think I've ever asked you this, but how did you really get into acting, that bug? How did you really love it? You know, I'd love to say that I was an artistic child. <laughs> and uh, artistic, I, I, and yes. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to uh, you know, push art on the world. Yes, sir. Make people laugh and cry. But I actually got into it for the girls. I was 12 <laughs> years old, and I was asked to sort of be a, a surrogate chaperone for uh, my my mother's my mother's best friend's daughter, who was a year older than me, and she was 13 and a half years old. Wow! <laughs> and she was the belle of the ball. I bet. She had legs that started right <laughs> under her nipples, <laughs> and she wanted to be an actress. Uh, and I was entering middle school. Yes, sir. <laughs> we used to call it junior high school back. That's then. what I called it back then. And it was a very traumatic leap. You know, you could open your locker and turn, and the guy next to you in the gym, you know, had body hair. Right. And I looked like a pre-shrunk Danny Kay at the time, you know. I looked like Harpo Marx if somebody put nair all over him and strip searched him. And I went off with this leggy, leggy, lovely lady uh, who wanted to be an actress. And I thought, well, I'll be sweeping up behind stage and maybe I'll get a flashlight and they'll let me be an usher. And I auditioned and I, I, be, I, I got the leading role in Pinocchio. Outstanding. The leading role in Aladdin and his magical lamp. Man. I got the lead role in Peter Pan. Fantastic. I got the lead role in Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> I lost my virginity. <laughs> and at the bottom of the, the basement of the theater, in the girls' bathroom, right. I remember sitting there when I was going to be Aladdin, and they dyed my hair black, and my hair was very long for the time. This is like 1960 or 1961. Oh, my goodness. I'm just a kid. Yeah. The girls put these things called spoolies in my hair. There was a right. way to curl your curl hair. Curl your hair, All right. the girls are 14, 15, and 16 years old. They're teaching me how to blow smoke rings. And they were taking those long tubes of glitter and putting them on their brassiers. Right, right. Because they were the harem girls. Yes, yes. You know, they were the harem girls from Aladdin. That's it. I had a boob in this ear. I had a maiden, a maiden form bra boob in this ear. They're ratting my hair and putting it in these curlers, teaching me how to blow smoke rings. West Side Story is playing on the on the on the uh, portable uh, record player. Movies, yeah. And I went, yeah, right. <laughs> Acting's for sissies. I ain't telling anybody about this. And the rest is history. That's history. That's the truth. Fantastic. All in one summer, you know. And uh, that I, is really I was wild. able to use all my gymnastic skills that I had. I, had, I was a pretty decent little gymnast then. Good, and I, good, used, good. I had good eye-hand coordination. Right on. And I was a funny-looking kid, you know. I, would, I had all this hair and uh, these big ears. But you still and, have hair. So and, well, I was thing. this funny-looking kid. And no. I got all these leads. I had a lot of energy. And... At some point in, in I'm not until college. At some point in college, right. I really began to take it seriously. I had a great roommate, Hugh Corcoran, 
from the great uh, Corcoran family uh, in sure. Hollywood. You know, the, the daughter was Bachelor Definitely. Father. Definitely. Uh, his brother was Old Yeller. Right on. His brother was Swiss Family Robinson. Yeah, Robinson, right, of course. His brother was Pollyanna. I grew up with all oh, that. Oh, we all yeah. grew up with that. Yeah, that was course. the family. And at any given time, a famous stuntman would walk through the door. Wow. And it was, uh, uh, the father had, had, had passed away, and the family was all surviving together in this gorgeous ranch house out in the valley with a swimming pool and an aviary and there was the never-ending Irish stew yes, for all of the, the family and yes, their sir, friends. Sure. And we'd go over there to do my laundry. <laughs> and he was a serious, smart actor and uh, writer and he turned me on to a lot of the classic Hollywood stuff. Good. The stuff my parents hadn't turned me on to. Right. They turned me on to a lot. Anatomy of a Murder. Sure. Uh, uh, oh yeah, my uh, God! On the waterfront, I went right, to the premiere right. of *Fugitive Kind* with Marlon Brando Hitchcock, at uh, Grauman's Chinese yeah. Theater when oh, it was still Grauman's Chinese Theater. Yeah, I remember. So I had all that stuff in me swirling around. But that's a good thing for an actor, too. And we fell in love with the English New Wave. Tom Courtney, Peter O'Toole, Alan Bates, Albert Finney. So we were sharing our love for those guys. David Warner, right. who we all know as a horror icon, right. but back then we all loved him for this movie called Morgan. It right. was just this crazy, offbeat, uh, kind of avant-garde yeah, so movie that introduced a young teenage Vanessa Redgrave. Right. And so I was just obsessed with that. That's when I became a serious actor. I studied with Jeff Corey, who had just recently coached Jack Nicholson. And, That's uh, amazing. Yeah, then I studied wow. with Lee Strasberg. And then I yeah, auditioned God, for yeah, and Strasburg. got in the Royal Academy of Dramatic Fantastic. Art. And I've been working ever since. And you love it. You've yeah. done such an excellent job in everything that you've been in. What would you say is one of your favorite parts or roles or films? Well, I have a great underrated fight scene in a movie <laughs> called Stay Hungry. Okay. 1975. Yeah, 70s. Uh, Jeff Bridges, Sally Field, Scatman Crothers. Oh, God, yes. uh, Joanna Cassidy from Blade Runner. Yep. Ed Begley Jr., me, My and uh, I'm one. Of, I'm actually fourth billing in that movie. I think <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger's debut. Oh man! Uh, it's about it's about the New South, Jimmy Carter's New South, and bodybuilding. Sure. Kind of a combat and, and the health fitness craze, and uh, it's even a little bit about real estate speculation wow. in the New South. It's a great little underrated film by the wonderful Bob Rafelson, who had just had a big success with five easy pieces yes, which yeah, introduced and again introduced Jack Nicholson Jack Nicholson and right yeah. right I'm and familiar. I have a fight scene in that movie where I take the I think probably the second greatest hit to the balls of anybody <laughs> oh, no. in the history of movies oh, no. probably probably Paul Newman kicking l l Lurch <laughs> In Butch Cassidy and the Sundance, Sundance Kid, Kid is sure, the first one. Sure. But I take a pool cue. Yeah, that was a quick fight. I take a pool cue, and uh, <laughs> it's a great fight scene. And I have a, an earlier fight scene in that movie that's also very good, so where I do a, rent that now. a sucker punch. Because that one I don't remember. Yeah, and I have a pool. I have a pool scene with Jeff Bridges where I, I literally am talking about cur <laughs> curling, the sport of curling, <laughs> and in the middle of this monologue about curling, I hit a five bank shot. Oh, and I, I nailed it on the second take. Outstanding. All right. So Outstanding. I, I'm. I'm in Impressed with that, but my, my favorite performance is my last one. Well, not my last one, but my my third to my last one. Sure. Uh, summer of 2015, I did a movie called uh, Last Showing in England. Right. I starred with Finn Jones from the Game of Thrones. Right. That's my performance I'm most proud of because I'm, I'm dealing with an accent. I shaved my beard. I gained 20 pounds. Wow. I wear the I wear the ugliest little English mustache you've ever seen, <laughs> and I'm kind of channeling Richard Attenborough from Seance on a Wet Afternoon. <laughs> but it's it's very strange. If you like one hour photo, I think you'll like this movie. Yeah, Robin it's, Williams. Yeah, it's this movie's a thriller. Yeah, in that kind of De Palma, outstanding early De Palma style. Well put. With a little very bit good. of that Brian De Palma, with a little bit of that 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 one hour photo sensibility to it. Outstanding. Good so, for you. So yeah, what, check out last. Showing. Good deal. Right. Now for you, just two more questions. One, what can you promote to the fans and readers? Because uh, you've got so much going on. What would you like to get out there? Okay, uh, I'm going back. I'm leaving tomorrow, uh, Sunday yes, from uh, from right here uh, in Hunt Valley. Yes, sir. And I'm back to L.A. to work on uh, Master of Orion, a wow. big game. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I have a movie coming out from Europe uh, called Night World, which is going to be interesting. I'm kind of a contemporary blind Van Helsing in that wow, and it's it's about fascinating. it's about portals throughout the world oh, portals that are man. sealed I love that, that, are, that are sealed through a kind of international agreement with an with ancient societies and they're actually an entrance to a kind of purgatory yes sir not hell but a kind of purgatory right, right. that's called dark world and I worked with Jason London in that and then 
I have a movie coming out in early 2017 Whoa. that I'm really, really happy with. Uh, it's called The Midnight Man, and it stars the wonderful, wonderful, gifted Lynn Shea wow. from the Insidious franchise. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, that subset horror, the game you shouldn't play when you're a little kid, you know. <laughs> Don't play. I, I had great success with one called Urban Legend. Yes, sir. Back in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. That, yeah. yeah. Uh, I worked with Michael Rosenbaum right. and, and uh, J uh, Jared, Jared uh, Leto and God. a lot of people in that. And uh, that's, what, that, that, that's that, you know, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Right, right, right. Spin around three times and pick your nose. <laughs> This one's this one's about this one's about blood and thumbprints and signatures and salt and 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 you're on the clock starting at, a, at 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 this irregular time after midnight to an irregular time after three in the morning. Wow! And I, the director was a was an art director on a great film I did called uh, uh, Behind the Mask: The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Mm -hmm. And that's another recent film that I did that's sort of ascending to cult status good, now. Good. Uh, and this. He, I worked with him on that, and, and I really trust this guy. Uh, uh, I, I think he's really, r really That's something. Good to hear. So That's look, at, look, look hear. for Midnight Man, early we 2017. We will. One more quick question. Everybody here is here <clears throat> collecting autographs and collectors. Do you collect anything, sir? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I just got uh, the German, a German Phantom of the Opera uh, of my face after I've repaired it so that I can attend my beloved opera. Oh. But you see the sutures, you see the sutures and the, the flesh of my victims sure. covering the phantom's oh, deformed nice. half of his face. But it's kind of romantic and it's kind of goth and the, the sides of the uh, uh, poster are the velvet curtains of the opera. So I love it and it's in German. Oh, and I've been looking, I've been looking for it. it. I found it with this wonderful lady. She collects, uh, she's out of Brussels. Okay. And, uh, but you know, I just got my new website going. Yes, it, sir. It's gonna be up any second. Yes, sir, tell us about that. Well, please. it's just robertengland.com. Wait till Halloween. It's supposed to definitely be up by Halloween. Good. But we went down all these wormholes on the internet to find some really cool stuff. Yes, sir. So I, by doing that, I found great, examples of foreign posters that I never knew. I just found an Italian poster of the original Nightmare on Elm Street wow. and it's the claw from part seven. So this is 1984 and somebody in Italy illustrated the, the claw that we eventually used in part seven. Right, but the claw on this that's poster. the anthropomorphic one that, that's the, the skeleton that turns into sure. the Freddy hand and it's hovering over it's hovering over uh, uh, a floating girl, the floating Nancy, and it's all in Italian. It's very Argento. That I love it. Fantastic. Yeah, but Good I mean, you. yeah, go online, kid. go online, fans, and check okay. stuff out because there's some great Japanese, Good. great Indonesian stuff out there. Good. And uh, I even found some stuff from Ghana. Not my. I found a great Freddy versus Jason, but even better. And I didn't get this one, and I this guy won't sell. I found an what? Alien versus Predator from Africa. That is off I the charts strange. That yeah. was even out Just there. so rare I and bet. so strange. They wouldn't sell and it's it. like folk art. And I hesitate to say primitive art. Well, they used to say primitive art. No, yes, this sir. guy knows how valuable this stuff's wow. going to be. Wow. Primitive art now is politically incorrect. Yes, but sir. It's, it has that <laughs> sensibility of, 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 of folk art to it. And it's just an amazing piece. Good for so you. Fantastic. Check it out. Last question. If you could get an autograph yourself from anyone, who would it be, sir? Well, most of the ones I cherish are, have passed away. Yes, sir. Um, but, you know, I really think that uh, Anthony Hopkins is an oh, extraordinary great, actor. Great actor. And, you know, I, I would love to find a great photo from one of his theater yes, triumphs sir. and have him sign that. I just got a King of the Hill signed by wow. Pamela, Pamela Adlin who's now wow. doing all of the Louis C.K. Right, series. Right. And Pamela was the voice of Bobby Hill. Name. Bobby, she was the voice of yes. Bobby Hill. Fantastic. And I, I, I had such a crush on her, <laughs> but I love her performance as Bobby Hill, and I love all her work with Louis C.K. Great. So I just found that I'm very eclectic in what I love, but I, I think something like that would be really fun to get. I, I was signing in London once, and a little old man in a beautiful Savile Row suit walked up, and uh, it was faded blue wow and he had a pair of probably thousand dollar seville roll yes, lobe sir. and lobe english shoes on but they were probably 50 years old oh my goodness and he had a pink plush vinyl tammy and the bachelor oh, autograph book and a gorgeous 
uh, Dunhill briefcase. And he came up to my table, and I was having a, the end of a Sunday in London, and I was a little slow because I was fighting the phenomenon of heroes had yes, come sir. for just one day only. Yeah, I can My imagine. friend Jack Coleman was sitting next to me with a line all the way to Surrey. <laughs> but I, you know, my line had slowed down a bit, and right, he right. came to the front of it, and he handed me this Tammy Tell Me True pink 1950s oh, vinyl man. autograph book with multicolored pages, yeah. and he took out an elegant fountain pen and asked me to sign it, and he opened it up, and I, I signed my name, and, he, and I did all his directions, just my name and my character, and I looked, and on the opposite page it said Boris Karloff. <gasps> and I turned the page over. Oh it was God. Bella Lugosi. Oh, wow. Christopher Lee. Peter Cushing. I thumbed back. Lon Chaney Jr. Then That's I flipped so to the front. Marlon Brando. Laurence Olivier. Vivian Lee. Anna Magnani. I looked Jeez in the back, he had Wiz. William Holden. This was probably a $150,000 autograph book. And my story is, and I'm sticking to it, because the, the autograph book itself yes, sir. did not go with his beautiful old threadbare suit and his beautiful old cracked shoes and his beautiful fountain pen and his beautiful Dunhill briefcase. Yes, sir. I think it was his sister's. <laughs> and I think she was an autograph <laughs> fan in the 50s. Unbelievable. And I think she, and my story is I believe she passed away and he's just continuing to collect, collect for her oh. in her original 1950s Debbie Reynolds Tammy Tell Me True right vinyl pink autograph Unbelievable. Book. But you never judge anybody. Yes, never sir. judge a fan. Never be you never know who it is. Yes, I'm so honored to be between, you know, uh, Boris Karloff, Lugosi, wow. Vincent Price. They were all there. That's he fantastic. had everybody. Oh my God! And he, what a and he great wanted me. You know, fun. yeah. yeah. So it's, it's good just for a, you. Yeah, it's just a great thing to know you're even considered great. amongst those names. Man, well, good luck right. for this weekend okay. at the Monster Mania. Thank you. And Robert Englund, thank right. you so much, thank sir. Thank you.